Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Forge Worlds as we get into Zawar Khad. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. And of course, if you have any suggestions for topics of Warhammer 40K, just comment down below and we'll try to create a video for you. With that said, let's get into 40 facts on Zawarkad. Zawarkad is a forge world of the Adeptus Mechanicus as well as a death world that sits at the heart of its own small stellar empire. Much of the knowledge of Zawarkad is based on the data recovered by the Metallic and Mechanicum during the Great Scouring, and even these records are cursory and fragmentary at best. Hence the specifics of the forge world's curious history especially its beginnings, remains unknown. What is certain is that Zao Arkad was initially founded by the Mechanicum Ark Expedition, heralding from Sacred Mars itself. The time frame of its inception is still debated among scholars, but is generally agreed upon as falling in the latter years of the Dark Age of Technology. To reach their final destination, the Mechanicum Ark must have been flung wildly off course from its intended target. What lore remains indicates that a powerful warp storm was responsible for wrecking the Ark's warp drives, as well as damaging its more conventional engines, thus prompting an emergency translation back into real space. When the Mechanicum Ark re-entered reality, be it by the hand of fate or blind luck, it was amid the uncharted and unknown stars of the deep galactic south. Orbiting a white star, the system they had emerged in counted numerous minor volcanically active planets, gas giants, and thick webs of asteroid belts, but only one green world capable of harboring life. That any world within range of the stricken Ark was habitable was viewed as a miracle by many colonists. Calculating that this world offered their only chance at survival, the Mechanicum Ark limped towards its destination, gathering more information as it closed in with the planet. Its atmosphere, Harvard oxygen, and the three moons orbiting it were determined to possess heavy mineral concentrations, making it suitable for settlement and offering the opportunity for potential expansion. Full of confidence, the colonists named their new system Zao and landed their craft on the new world. It was only after landing that the colonists realized that their new haven was a blighted one. Fate had delivered them onto a death world. The tropical world boasted an atmospheric oxygen level far above the Terran norm, while local flora and fauna quickly proved highly toxic for any augmented human. The prevailing climate was that of a tropical rainforest, with wildly fluctuating temperatures and ceaseless rainfall, which brought humidity to severe levels. These harsh atmospheric conditions left the colonists with little choice but to remain in those sections of their forced landed ark and its cargo holds that could be fully airlocked and were able to shield them from Zao Arkad's weather. The first parties to venture outside the downed vessel soon testified to their new homeworld's ability to sustain life. Grossly enlarged fauna that grew at a speed seldom seen and an extensive population of monstrously large arthropods provided a snapshot of the planet's hostile ecosystem. From the outset, the aggressive level of these beasts threatened the very existence of the colony, and if it had not been for the handful of titans that had survived in the Ark's holds, the colonists' survival would have been impossible. Thus began the titans' unceasing Iron Vigil, which would later become the name of the Ligo Zistobais, the Forge World's most powerful protectors. To the colonists of Zawarkad, it must have seemed as if the fertile world consciously resisted every attempt at colonization. The maraud different species of trees formed a dense canopy that led through little sunlight, but at the same time, these trees were so tall that they reached above the cloud level, which meant that the storms and monsoon rains formed directly over the colonists' heads, the foliage of the canopy further trapping the humidity below, causing intense corrosion that reached previously unseen levels. Even when the colonists tried to cut these trees down, the oxygen-rich atmosphere and the increased sunlight let the ground erupt with new saplings, the forest growing even thicker in the short-lived clearings made by the colonists, where the canopy grew so thick as to entirely block the rays of Zao Star, 
great macro predators made their lairs, and the ferociousness of these beasts ensured that the colonist titans never ran out of targets. The only human edible produce of Zawarkad proved to be a tuber, and even this had to be boiled and filtered repeatedly for many solar hours before it could be consumed with no or few ill effects. But even with Zawarkad trying to kill them, the human colonist held on as mankind has always done and will continue to do. The colonists of Zawarkad forged their home through adversity, driven by their own iron faith in the Omnissiah and the Martian doctrine of unceasing labor. Quickly realizing that expansion across Zawarkad's surface would be futile, the colonists decided to live beneath the ground, where the atmosphere could be more easily regulated and they would be safe from the predators of Zawarkad's macrofauna. Using the deteriorating shell of their colony arc as cover, deep access shafts were cut into the subsurface, allowing colonists to abandon the cannibalized wreckage of their starship and start a new existence deep below the surface. This venture marked the foundation of the world's first forge vein. Others would eventually follow, as painstaking expeditions were sent out into the wild braving the dangers of the rainforests, exploring new regions, and sinking new biomes and forge veins into the ground. As the first forge veins slowly became functional, the worker caste was granted new technologies that allowed them to complete their work with greater speed and efficiency. Each standard year, more forge veins were founded, and within the space of one Terran century, Zawarkad reached the ranks of a fully self-sustained forge world. To mark this occasion, the world's planetary governor, now bearing the newly created title of Supreme Domini of the Zawarkad, announced the start of the First Conjunction, a period of time during which the Forge world would aim towards becoming fully equipped and functional, a golden age of economic expansion that allowed Zawarkad to grow strong. As part of the First Conjunction, the settlers of Zawarkad not only limited their ambitions to just the development of their world, but also turned their gaze skyward. The three moons orbiting Zawarkad, which were designated Arkad 1, 2, and 3, harbored welcome mineral resources that forge worlds needed desperately to grow and evolve. With this goal in mind, permanent mining bases were established on each moon. To reach them, the first transorbital spacecrafts were manufactured from repurposed materials drawn from the remains of the Mechanica Mark and powered using simple hydrogen torch engines. As exploitation began on Zawarkad's moon, it was quickly deemed more efficient to harbor much of the labor force on lunar colonies rather than Zawarkad itself. The first conjunction would last for an entire Terran millennia before it was declared complete by the office of the Supreme Domini. By its own accord, each forge train was now considered fully operational, while the population of the servial workers in their lunar bases had risen into the hundreds of thousands, each generation of workers totally devoted to generating resources for their master's use below. The Supreme Domini and the governing Magister Locum of every forge train had long awaited the announcement of the first conjunction's completion and had already laid out the objectives of their second phase of expansion, the Second Conjunction. Unknowingly, Zawarkad had entered its last years of prosperity. With the Lunar Transportation Fleet now numbering dozens of transportation barracks and shuttles, the influx of raw materials extracted from the lunar colonies permitted the forge veins to expand and research new and more efficient technologies. Yet this was still not enough for the tech adepts to achieve their desired ends. While useful, the materials extracted from the lunar colonies lack the essential properties needed to develop the more advanced technologies each forge range secretly or openly coveted. In particular, the moons lacked void-worthy material that would allow the domains of Zawarkad to grow beyond their own orbit and let them claim the entire Zao system and its untapped resources. A first step to achieving this goal was to settle and claim the neighboring volcanic world of Nitos. To ensure that the effort expanded on this venture would not be in vain, the Magi of Zawarkad launched a new space program to send unmanned survey probes to Nitos. What these probes found confirmed that the Magi's suspicion 
Nitos did harbor the rare elements desired by the Forge Fanes. With the lunar colonies rapidly reaching the limits of their production, the necessary surplus population for a grand settlement expedition existed, and so the colonization of Nitos was fixed as the first great target of Zawarkad's second conjunction. And those were 40 facts on Zawarkad. Now part 2 is going to go over the mysterious catastrophe that awaits this awesome forge world. And of course, how is it going to bounce back? Is it even going to bounce back or is it going to become traitorous? Uh, check out part 2. It should come out tomorrow, which is Wednesday, if not Thursday, depending on when this video comes out. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. If you... Don't want to wait for me to uh, read you the lore, then just jump on over to the wiki page, the number one place for you to get awesome lore and inspiration, link down in the description of course. Uh, and then we have a Greater Wa episode up on the uh, Patreon page, so if you want to check that out, uh, jump on over to Patreon. It's, <clears throat> it's a simple dollar, but at least you get extra stuff and you know that you are supporting One Mind Syndicate. If you can't, we understand, you're still going to get... Um, Another Greater Watt episode this week, uh, again, either tomorrow or today, depending on when this video comes up, um, but um, liking, commenting, and sharing helps uh, the channel out as well. Alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.